Let's go, let's go. Da, da, da. Okay, welcome all to the Master Leong Show. So today we talk about Taiwan election. So weekend chit chat lah, just a short one only. Not a deep dive or, or anything lah, just a weekend chit chat because I saw the news, you know, then a lot of the news headline is very pessimistic. So I worry that but but what wow, I will panic ah, I will cannot sleep ah. What is it? China market going to crash or not tomorrow? So uh, I'm here to address your worries. Also, Jasper Lim, Shadow, MT Pulse, Ani Goro, Swifty Forever, Colin Chin. Oh, welcome, welcome. Wallace, good evening. Mr. Tokyo Me, let's go, let's go. Pang Yao Tian, hua la, hua la. Okay, so oh, over the weekend, I, I think you all saw the news uh, oh, of the Taiwan election. So, some background oh, the uh, the previous uh, president was the Tsai Ing Wen, uh, so she already served two term that means four years four years eight years so she cannot serve a third term anymore so for taiwan their system a bit is copy the u.s one so if you are president you can serve two terms the, the most lah. also their uh, party right her vice uh, president that means her her second in charge oh, this time was the candidate that that ran for the party so in the end he attained a uh, victory or oh, uh, Lai Chin, I don't know. Lai, so I also don't know how, how to pronounce it. So, a very emotional win. So, you, you see the Bloomberg headlines are all saying that, wow, Taiwan defined China or to, to, to make him win. So, the opposition, which is the Kuomintang, KMT, wow, they very sad. So, they will apologize that they let their, their supporters, all this. So, you see media, wow, like very exciting like that. So, uh, for me, right, I will just clarify that I'm not taking any sides or I'm not saying I support this party or I support that party. I support the stock market. I want to make money in the stock market. So, my concern as an investor is how does this affect the stock market? But look at like the mainstream news headline, right? a lot of them, the headline is all very pessimistic. They say that Taiwan elects US friendly president defying China warnings. So other headlines is even worse, ah, or, or that this is a big blow to, to the basic ambition, this is a big blow to SJP. Uh, so, and then we also saw the news that Biden came out to say that we do not support independence. Uh, this, this was on Saturday, uh, yesterday night. So for US, right, I think they are, they are very busy now. There's the Russia-Ukraine war and there's the tension in the Middle East. Or uh, like... Uh, uh, the Red Sea area, the ships are being disrupted. Then the US, they have started to launch missiles, all this uh, against the so-called terrorists. Uh. So for US, they really, really do not want tension between Taiwan and China. They hope that in Asia, there will be peace because Europe and, and Middle East already is so so messy. So Biden, for him, uh, yeah, his EQ is a bit low. Uh. Sometimes he, he does not have to know how to miss his words yeah so uh, this is a very strong statement uh, and, and it strikes fear if you look at the news headline a lot of this uh, strikes a lot of fear so the worry is that oh it, uh, that monday is it hong kong market gonna drop three percent four percent five percent my answer is no la. you know it's, if you look at the fundamentals actually the results is actually positive in my view if you look at it uh, in details so uh, so uh, the uh, DPP, la, the Democratic uh, Progressive Party, they won 40% of the votes. Also, so they are the winner, so-called the winner. Then there's a KMT, la, Kuomintang. Uh, number two, number three is uh, TPP, Taiwan, uh, I think, uh, Progressive Party, la, or Taiwan People Party, or Taiwan People Party, yeah, Taiwan People Party, or which, which under number three. So... On the surface, you look at the news headlines that, oh, it, it's still the same party that, that win. So the Tsai Ing-wen over the past eight years has shown a lot of resistance against uh, Beijing. So uh, from a layman term, if you don't understand politics, I also don't understand politics. So DPP basically is anti-China. KMT in the past, they were the ruling party. They were led by Ma Ying-jiu. Uh, and um, for Ma Ying-jiu, the eight-year... Uh, service right they were very close to china so most people would think that kmt is pro-china also dpp anti-china kmt 
pro China or in layman terms, ah, but it's deeper than that. TPP is probably in between. It is like a third party like that. They want to strike a balance. They they want to engage with China, but they don't want to be too close with China. So they advocate peace. They don't want it to escalate. So it's in between. So actually, the votes are very mixed. But like uh, the way the system is run is like in the US, you number of seats that you own, whether you have the majority vote or not. So back in two zero one two under the Kuomintang. KMT, the blue color, the mind you, or they had the majority vote. So any plan, any legislation that they roll out, right, it will immediately be passed. So in 2016, the whole thing flipped already, or become the DPP, Democratic Progressive Party. Also called, back then, this was the main party, this DPP is so called opposition, or also called opposition. Opposition won, and opposition for the last two terms had the majority. At the majority, but now this green color or um, opposition is now mainstream because most people, like especially the young folks, or they don't want to uh be related with China. They want independence. So now DPP is seem like the mainstream, and KMT feels like the opposition. So so that's that's the feeling you get. So politics is is quite messy. But the problem now is that ah, uh, they don't have uh the majority of the votes. They don't have more than half the votes. So that's that's the big problem. For the DPP, so you look at the so-called ah parliament na oh, so there are total of one hundred and thirteen seats. So in two zero two zero the the previous term they had sixty one seat, more than half of it. So you need fifty seven or more seats to be the majority. That means any legislation, any plan you you put right, all the DPP just raise up their hand, you will get passed already. Also, they can do whatever they want. So over the past two terms, they were very strong, and there was a lot of changes in in Taiwan, be the economy and be the politics. As just as we see that, uh, Taiwan was leaning closer and closer with U.S. and further and further away, uh, with China. So the tension, uh, keep increasing. So in this two zero two four election, right, the power has shifted. First of all, the TPP, that means the third party coming, right, they took quite a number of seats. Eh, they they took eight seats. Eh. So so that's significant, or so so that's like five percent of the seats. So they now have a presence. Previously they they had almost no presence. Then you notice that you look at the seats, right? Kuomintang has fifty two seats. Eh, that means the so called opposition has more seats than than the main party. The main party only has fifty one. Also, technically it means what? It means that wherever they have a legislation, as someone I want to have a legislation means that oh we want to declare independence of Taiwan. You you not say you say means. It it happens, man. It must be passed through law. Everyone must approve it. So any plan, right? You need approval. So if 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 it launches any plan to declare independence, of course KMT and TPP will vote it down. So it cannot be approved because they only have fifty one. They don't have the majority. So this is actually good news. Or it means that the DPP, the 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 their power isn't that strong. The power is actually very well divided. Divided in what sense is that DPP and KMT they are both equally matched in terms of the the number of the seats they have, but the tiebreaker the middleman is TPP. So going forward, right, the show has not ended. The show just begin. So DPP and KMT they will be in a hurry both to curry flavor TPP. If TPP example, let's say TPP and KMT they chop cross. Become alliance. Let's say together we share the same view. We will fight DPP together. Wow, then they become sixty already. Then then they become sixty means they are the majority. Then any legislation or by TPP come up right together they vote down, vote down, vote down. Then they can totally disable all their plans. But the opposite is also true. If DPP wins over TPP, they have fifty nine seats. Then KMT or no power already because and anything legislation, TPP and DPP together vote. Oh, then then you will pull. So TPP is like the wild card. So the show is not over. Actually, the power is actually not not swing to to one side. So this is what analyst is saying. So, boss, ah, for me, ah, ah, I'm not a political scientist, lah. Oh, I'm just an uncle talking cock on YouTube, ha. Oh, so I just sharing my my views and what I read in the news, lah. Ah, I'm not an expert. Oh, just to clarify. But I'm trying to explain it to you. So even if you're a layman who do not have follow the political scene. Roughly, you know what is really happening on the ground and how it impacts. 
Also, uh, this uh, from the Taipei Tsinghua Dashue, I'll say the results may clear way for policies to promote exchanges with mainland, such as reducing restrictions on mainland students and tourism. So given that TPP now how has the power to swing the legislation, like I tell you, is that a third party, it will be difficult for DPP to put uh, forward policies. Because DPP now, when they put forward their policies, right, it's not 100%, it can be voted down by TPP and KMT. They don't have the majority vote. So everything there will be check and balance. So with KMT and TPP forming a majority, it could mean an increase in policies that will promote communication and exchanges. Means that they will demand that this party communicate more with China. But what's now is that very is that cold war like that. They refuse to communicate, then China keep putting pressure on, on, on Taiwan. But now I think it's actually good news or that so uh the how I say so I, I would think that DPP right cannot push up any policy right without considering the the other parties. So the all three of them must come to agreement then the policy will, will be passed. Yeah, so it means more engagement with, with China. So the style is actually shift, shifting back a bit already. Yeah, so so actually this this is good. If, if it was like say DPP having like 60 seats or 70 seats, right? Then things will be the same. It will be status quo. It will be the same as what has happened over the past eight years. The relationship between Taiwan and China will continue to worsen. But now I think there's a chance uh, for communication. Yeah, as we see that the power is more balanced. And we look at 2020 and 2024. DPP actually lost a lot of votes. We, we go back here, right? In the past, right, uh, two elections ago, they had 60%, you know, 60%. It dropped to 50 something and now it's 40%. So you can see that in the green, car green color, the DPP, right? They, their, their votes, you see in 2016, they had more than 60%. 2022, they had about maybe like 50, slightly uh, 52, 53% of the seats. Now, they don't, they lose their, their majority, that there's less than 50% already. So you see that DPP has been, been losing their votes, losing their popularity. Why? Because like you look at documentaries, right? The young folk, folks, also over the past eight years, there's a rise of the teenagers, those in their 20s, those in their 30s, they are more educated, they are more exposed to social media. So looking at their interviews, right, some of them are saying that the government has not managed the economy well. Housing prices have skyrocketed. So Taipei, prices up 20%, or uh, Sing, Sing Chu up 100%, double, Kaohsiung up 50%. So those that are extremely price high, right, is those areas that, for example, that are the base of TSMC, where, where there's a high demand for, for labor, high demand of accommodation. So for Taiwan, right, they basically have gone all in on semiconductor for, for their industry. In the past, Taiwan was famous for what? Agriculture, uh, seafood, all these uh, vegetable fruits, and they export heavily and they do business heavily with China. That was under the the leadership of Ma Ying Jiu. So for Ma Ying Jiu, right, he, for his the two term, right, he was very pro-business, very pro-economy. So geographically located, uh, Taiwan is just beside China. So he, he kept leading towards China to keep increasing the trade. So the economy prospers. But, but then in the end, right, they vote for the other side because why? Because the young folks, they cho choose that. They don't care about prosperity. Prosperity is only for those who are doing business, those who own property. Property prices go higher, business what? But the common folks, they feel that they don't want to be associated with China because they saw what happened in Hong Kong. Or the Yellow Umbrella Movement, they saw that uh, China hit Hong Kong very hard. Uh, like, like really, so, I would describe the situation that in layman terms as China is the father of two sons. The son is Hong Kong and Taiwan. So Hong Kong and Taiwan, uh, based on, but I'm not here to give you history lesson now. So in, in, in the past, they were under the British rule or in the past. So the British hand over the Hong Kong, 
uh, to 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 China. Then the Taiwan basically use is last time uh, during World War Two, or they fought against the Japanese. Then the Japanese uh, lost, left already, right? Then they have the own internal civil war between two parties, lah. The CCP and, and the current the the, the ta ta Taiwan folks. Then the Taiwan folks lost. They retreated to this Taiwan island. So they they were actually the original ruler in in in, in China, but they retreated to Taiwan, and then the CCP uh uh took over the the entire mainland China. Also, so in that sense, they they say that uh the roots of Taiwan goes back to 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 China. So basically, China Tai Taiwan or Hong Kong, like it or not, by blood or by by history, they are all linked together. But who is right? Who is wrong? Or it, it, it's hard to debate but you just imagine imagine this as the father and two sons the two sons they both they have been uh, educated by the west freedom of speech or they want uh, democracy they want th their own rights or they, they want to go party <laughs> or they want to do things that they are able to do but china is like a very strict father or keep uh, suppressing them or keep telling them cannot do this cannot do that then when Hong Kong, when uh, this son or oh, try to escape, the father give him one tight slap and pull him back, back, pull him back home. Yeah, so now the biggest worry is that will uh, China invade Taiwan? So my answer is no. La. Oh, the father will never kill the son. Taiwan is like the son that, that left home and now is still quarreling with the father. In the past, during the Ma Ying Jiu era, oh, the father said, hey, son, Every Saturday, Sunday, we hang out, la, eat hot pot. La. I give you pocket money, okay? We, we make peace. Oh, so, so like that. So the, the, the trade, they, continue, they do a lot of trade, both uh, prosperous. Oh, it was a win-win uh, situation. But, but the people, they don't like oh, the president being uh, so close with, with China. So now it, the, the, it's like they want to uh, break the relationship. With the father that's why the father now angry they say oh since you you want to disown me that i don't give you pocket money i don't do trade with you uh then like that so so now it's like a huge quarrel like that yeah so okay this is the china so at the end my, my thinking is that yeah so things are actually not, not as bad as what western media is saying now western media tends to overblow now i think the odds of Ch taiwan invasion is near zero la, less than one percent almost zero la. And, and that the least uh, election, the outcome is actually favorable uh, because the, the main party that doesn't have full power or uh, the power actually has been rebalanced. So when they make a decision, they have to make a decision as a whole. As a whole, the decision will be to the benefit of the common folks of Taiwan. And I think the number one priority is peace. And number two is prosperity because Taiwan, to be honest, their economy has not been doing well. And their economy will continue to be slow. Why? Because they are so heavy on semiconductor. And semiconductor is decoupling. So TSMC, they are manufacturing a lot of chips for NVIDIA. But NVIDIA is going to lose one quarter of their market. They are not going to sell to China. So TSMC, they will only take the order. TSMC and NVIDIA, they will only be serving the US and Europe customers. So Taiwan, SMIC, all this, that's, that's a divide really. So there will be a divide in the semiconductor industry and TSMC, uh, it, it's hard for them to, to, to show growth, but they're also building a plant in the US and, and that has not been uh, going well or a lot of hiccups, a lot of problems. Uh, then they are, then even when they win the election, uh, uh, they say that uh, they will continue to focus on uh, semiconductors. Semicon Doctor is like a crown jewel. So be, people like the Western media, they will have those theory crafts say that, oh, Taiwan will invade, will be invaded because TSMC is the crown jewel. Taiwan, want to, to, uh, Taiwan the, the manufacturing plant, the technology, all this is so important. China wants to seize it. The answer is it, not. The answer is not. Yeah. If, if China wants to seize Taiwan, it's, it's easy. La, that military might can easily overwhelm it. But it will be a meaningless victory because he wants the sun as a whole. You take the gun, shoot the sun, you win back the sun, you get the dead body. It's not a victory, am I right? So, so the father will never uh, kill the son. And, and actually, things 
are better. I think they, they will start to have engagement again. Uh, yeah. So so don't worry too much. I don't think tomorrow Hong Kong market will, will crash. La. So back to the uh, China economy. La. Also, data due on Wednesday will likely show that the GDP expanded 5.2% for the entirety of last year. So 2023, uh, GDP growth very strong. So, uh, but the fourth quarter GDP could likely lose some steam or it won't be as strong as the third quarter. Uh, mostly it's dragged down by, by the property market. We saw property we thought stabilized, then end up it did not stabilize. So all eyes are still on the, the, the property market. So uh, the conscious is that it will hit the official target, uh, break 5%. But the big question is next year, what is the target? Next year, uh, I think they, they could be ambitious and go for 5, 5% again. Uh, but but most likely is is side sideway sideway la. but but the worry is that the the growth might slow down come towards four point five percent or what so only after Chinese New Year then we know what is their GDP target for two zero two four so the expectation is that Monday the, the central bank uh will lower rate by ten basis point to two point four percent so uh that that will be good la. more liquidity and help push the market. But most important, I think all eyes is on physical support. Well, the finance minister signaled that the government spending will increase. So whether that there are measures uh, to push consumer spending to get people to buy property or, or whatever. So every month we will see them uh, making announcement. So eventually I think things will stabilize. Or just wait for China to keep launching policies to stabilize the, the property segment and to push the economy. Yeah, so so lastly, you can see them. Uh, so this is the Taiwan, the, the Air Force pilot. Uh, so they put the badge you see. Uh, with, uh, so a uh, scramble, uh, then you see uh, uh, them with the flag uh, pun punching the, the Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, so yes, uh, they, they are quarreling. Uh, but I, I think they won't get physical. Uh, or it's just like the father and son arguing and arguing. Uh. They won't argue forever. Uh. Then uh, like the Josh Yo, the speech, uh, the Josh Yo speech that I, I watched recently, or is a one hour speech. But in short, is that the the, the 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 best is that they can come and, and come to a strike a deal. That would be the best outcome. The the, the longer Taiwan de delays it, right, the, the more it suffers because the more it, it gets pressed down by, by, by China. Imagine 10, 20 years later, China is the largest economy, US is number two. Then that by that time, Ta Taiwan will have to give in already. The, their position gets weaker and weaker uh, each term. Yeah, so eventually they will realize it. Uh, yeah, because their economy uh, is not, will not be doing well. Uh, it, it's starting to show uh, very stag stagnating and sh showing a, a slowdown already. Yeah, they, they need the, the Chinese uh, trade a lot. Yeah, so, so that's all my, my sharing for tonight. Yeah, just a quick one only. Uh, that's a uh, Sunday special. Talk hot, talk hot only. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, okay. Okay, Jojo, welcome, welcome. Oh, Boon, welcome. Yeah, Jin Yu, welcome. Okay, Oleg, tomorrow another minus 10%. Uh. No, la, I think tomorrow may be down 1 or 2%. Uh. Won't crash. Uh. Like, you look at the news headlines, it, it's very scary, but you look at the details, it, it's really not, not that bad. Yeah. America, Master Wen Baba Moon, my friend, I smoke too much opium for you. Uh. I don't know. I, 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 I hope it's this year, the year of Dragon will hot. Uh, but, but nobody can time the market. Great companies that are super overvalued, but people think that China might be a lost decade. I just hold on. Uh, if that's the case, I just hold all the way. Uh, as long as earnings and revenues keep growing. Uh. Nobody knows when, when China will rally. But as long as they keep growing earnings, keep growing revenues, and they keep increasing share buybacks and dividends, then, then, then uh, I, I'm happy. Look at the fundamentals. Uh, don't be too concerned with the stock price. Uh. But we are already at support already. We, we are not crashing further. More or less, we are at the lows already. Yeah. Okay, Jin Yu, wah, into crypto. Wah. Pixels, cheaper bomb now. Wah. No lah, no lah. Yeah. Actually, the, the TPP and, uh, and the KMT, right? Before this election, they had talks whether they want to combine their entity together or not. So that is a two-party race. If they had combined together, they were won already. But sometimes the drama is like that, ma. It's like romance of the three kingdom. Uh, that then that's why they did not combine, uh. And then they have some disagreement. They each fight their own. But I I, I would say DPP on paper they win. But I would say in terms of ideology, uh, 
I think they they, they are they are far they are, they are apart lah with with the other two parties, yeah. KMT got corruption charges. KMT is pro business lah. I, I would say lah, yeah. Taiwan drama very long. Yeah, whole police station can only have one police. Yeah, yeah. Taiwan may open down tomorrow lah. Down 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 a bit lah. Maybe down one or two percent lah. Don't be too worried. It, it's not gonna crash lah. Uh, yeah. But the headline news. They, they spread a lot of fear, but but don't be too worried. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow is the red card, ten basis point la. But but most likely la, But we see how it goes. Fifty for it's true that CCP fuck up big time on Hong Kong. Yeah, any chance to win back Taiwan dash by the protest? They 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 take a very hard stance on Hong Kong. So that created a lot of fear. Yeah. Okay. Go Kim, Bitcoin and Ethereum stable, all coin season begin. Oh yeah, oh. we and crypto also trade, you know, trades 24 hours, uh, 7 days. Well, Bitcoin actually dropped a lot. Eh. Yeah, that's why I tell you all don't rush in to buy the Bitcoin uh, ETF. It's like a, a, a trap. So they, they put the doom switch. Eh. After the ETF starts trading, you see, they all flush it down and take profit. Eh. So be careful. Eh. Buy maybe, I think 40k is still the psychological level some youtubers say nvidia 600 uh, i think now it's still a, a bull market uh, for the especially for the us la. hong kong market is bear market la, but but us market it is still bullish it's still on the uptrend la. so like people like what tom lee fan Shui, all this they will keep telling you buy the dip buy the dip la. but i won't buy the us dip la. see nvidia what wow, this year already up 10 percent already still uptrend la. 600 I think possible lah, but but the bubble only get bigger and bigger. Eventually the bubble will pop. But valuation is 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 on on the high side yeah. Master sounds like like but Adam Ku yeah. It's the uh, similar an analogy lah, so so that it's easy to understand no? Yeah. George Yeo, George Yeo is Singapore ah, the the former minister. He had George Yeo had this talk on on the YouTube. You all can go see lah. Yeah, watch a uh, Sefu. Seth Fu, uh, I don't quite like his channel. Uh. His one is Doomsday Porn, uh, I would say. But, but you, if you want the updates, all this, yeah, it's not bad. His channel is very popular. 100 over 1,000 uh, subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. 200, maybe you go in. Uh. 200. Tesla. 200 is a key psychological support. Uh. Yeah. 200 support. Yeah, I think a lot of people will, will go in and, and, and buy. Yeah. Uh, Maybe yeah, maybe morning open red, then then by afternoon is green and normal already. People realize that that is not that bad. Uh, Anigo Master was the best ETF for Hansen Index. The the, the basic Hansen Index is two eight oh oh Hansen Index ETF. Oh. So this one is the, the the Hong Kong Tracker Fund, the lowest management fee, a very low management fee. Yeah, so so this one oh. Yeah, then uh you you want the Hansen Tech is three zero six seven. Yeah. 3067 is this one. Uh, Hansen Tech ETF. Yeah. Master, any doubt on uh, MSCI? MSCI, why there? Nothing. Uh. MSCI, which one? The, the, the China index. Uh. MSCI is, is the index pro, 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 provide, pro, provider. Uh, M MSCI. MSCI is the index provider. So you mean like MSCI China. That is the M M M Chin no? So that's the M M Chin ETF no? Yeah. So so that one like I mentioned the other time uh, is is okay uh, you want to buy, then you can buy and inside got the tech tech uh, and also got the uh got, got tech and also got financial stocks inside the this ETF. Yeah. Go and see in Taiwan Meme uh. ah. Wow. Bumber, Bumber stock, I, I don't know. You invest in GX Hong Kong ETF. Oh, that, that's uh, another ETF provider. La. Yeah, but it's slightly cheaper. La, the, the, the price, GX uh, Hong Kong ETF. The ticker code is uh, different. Yeah, so this is also a uh, uh, So, uh, eh, yeah, it's, the ticker code is one, 2837. So it's under Mira Asset Manager. I think it's a Hong Kong uh, Asset Manager. Yeah, so this one the stock price is cheaper than the BlackRock one. Yeah, the, the bite size is, is smaller la, But both of them they track the same. They track the Hansen Tax Hansen Tech uh index. Yeah, so so they they track the same index. 
Judge Clay is best to scoop up Bitcoin now. Uh, Bedrock scoop. Uh, what? 11,900 Bitcoin last two trades. Because a lot of funds are going into the Bedrock ETF. La. So the Bedrock ETF is iBit. Is it? Hey, is it IBTC? What is it? La? What is the Bedrock ETF? La? I forget it. For the big, big Bitcoin one, I forget already. What is the Bedrock? Uh, I remember it's the IB, IT yeah, or what? Yeah. Oh, ICS Bitcoin Trust, yeah. This one, uh, because this one, the trading volume is like, wow, last night, Friday night, it crashed 6%. Yeah, they pulled the doom switch. So you see the suddenly down. But the trading volume is huge, you see? The volume is 22 million. That, that's a lot, that's a lot. The AUM will only keep going up. Uh. A lot of money is, is flooding in. So the AUM could go to a few billion dollars because I think this will be the most popular, uh, the Bitcoin ETF. Oh, Mima is Korean. Ah. Oh, no wonder. Sounds like Japanese or Korean. Also, it's Korean. Or oh, IBIT. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. 2837 is Mima. 3067. Oh, yeah, correct. Uh, Bedrock, I think the fees uh, slightly cheaper a bit. 0 0.25. Oh, GX is $3 cheaper. Oh, I see, I see. So, sm smaller bite size. Ah. But they both track the Hansen index ah. yeah so so that's all my sharing for tonight ah. just a short one come chit chat with you all yeah so tonight is a short sharing ah. because my channel not really focused on politics but i see a lot of people are very concerned ah, that, that that monday the, the stock market hong kong market will crash or what because the mainstream news is so negative but don't worry ah. actually things are not that bad i would say uh, it's actually this this the this result is actually positive or at worst neutral. It, it isn't negative lah, but people will say that uh master is hopium lah, I'm too uh positive already. Yeah, but I show you the facts what right? yeah. So so, uh we see how, but in the end it depends on how it play out lah. Yeah, because another four years to go, then uh, I I just hope that the the tension will not escalate lah. Best is they stay uh status quo lah. Settle code will, will be the best. Yeah. So Hong Kong market, yeah, Mr. Wei already crashed a lot already, so it's like bottom already. Yeah, so 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 that's all my sharing for tonight. See you all tomorrow night when we continue chit chat. Oh take care all, have a good night. Oh happy weekend. Bye bye. Good night. Ding ding ding.